When gone, all are no summer there and mine, all gone and some going there er mine, all gone and some going there er mine there. Mm, mm, can be cause I was the boy raising the dawn and by some there er mine all can and some going there er mine there mm, mm, can. I was interested in the possibility of poetry as a language of, uh, of power, mm -hmm. um, you know, but with a kind of, uh, you know, regret, <laughs> you know, that it doesn't exist in that way. Uh, you know, it, it's not power as rhetoric, it's, uh, you know, it, it implied a different kind of uh, power that, that, you know, that, that language could, you know, could somehow force a response from, uh, uh, from things. And, uh, um, that to, you know, to, to say the word was to, you know, somehow control the, uh, you know, the object. Now, I, I don't think that's really the case, but you know, but you know, but that poetry should uh, be derived, you know, from that kind of magical language. You know, gives me something, uh, you know, to, to think about. I mean, I see myself as, you know, coming out of a line of uh, uh, language users, language shapers, uh, you know, going back, you know, in one direction or another to, uh, uh, to proto-poets, shamans or whatever, you know, who use language in, uh, in, in, in that way. And I don't want to lose track of that. I want to, and wanted to explore it, uh, you know, more and more. You know, I think that, that Jerry has had a profound influence on the world, the, the world of contemporary poetry, whether the poetry itself has had a profound influence is neither here nor there. I mean, clearly it has on some and it hasn't on others, you know. I mean, Jerry is dedicated to an experimental mode and, uh, you know, has never uh, uh, been interested in a way in you know, and adjusting himself to a larger poetry audience. The translating uh, at uh, various times I've thought of as, uh, in a way, central to my work as a, uh, as, as a poet. Uh, and I think, I think maybe I've tended to over to exaggerate that, to exaggerate that. Um, you know, uh, I began, uh, you know, because it sounded good to say so, began to think that, uh, you know, may maybe all poetry uh, and all communication involves translation at uh, you know at, at some level, you know. So that, uh, you know even when we're, we're speaking the same language, we're you know we're translating each other. Uh, uh, yeah. And uh, in conversation, we can stop and say, you know, what do you mean? You know, meaning help me. You know, translate what you're saying uh, to me. Put this in other words. Uh, paraphrase it. Paraphrase as a as a form of uh, of, uh, of translation. So the, a series of poems called the Lorca Variations, the Variation de Lorca, uh, and uh, here I um, was using vocabulary uh, from English translations that I had made of Lorca uh, from a series of his poems called Sweets, in, in the musical sense, Sweets. Uh, and, uh, uh, so the uh, many of the words are Lorca's, the poems are mine, <laughs> or shared between us. Uh, uh, and it begins with this. Lorca's Spain, a homage. Beginning with olive trees, shadows. Beginning with roosters, crystal. Beginning with castanets and almonds. Fishes. This is a homage to Spain. This mists dogs. This silences rubber. This is Saturn. Beginning with yellow, eclipse. Beginning with needles, insomnia. Beginning with baskets, the moon.
Who is naked? The imagination, wrote Lorca, is seared. This is a homage to water, beginning and end. We went up to the Allegheny Seneca Reservation and lived there for two years. When we went there the first time in 67, Jerry spent the summer working with some of the singers on translating texts. It was, we were absolutely participants in the community, but, but we were not Indians. And although we were part of the clan structure, and people took that seriously. I mean, we have our names, you know, uh, and those are clan names. They're not just made up names, they're clan names. Um, the idea is that only one person is supposed to have a name at a time. So when we die, we're supposed to be, give the name back. You know, the whole development of the concept of ethnopoetics, which was his, um, has been extremely influential. I began uh, working at the Seneca Indian Reservation on a, a big Jewish book. So that seemed like the, you know, the perfect thing to be doing there. Uh, and completing a series of poems called Poland, 1931, my attempt to call into question and to get involved in a, a type of identity writing about which I had many qualms uh, before I got into it, to explore ancestral sources of my own uh, in a world of Jewish mystics, thieves, and madmen. Poland, 1931, The Wedding. My mind is stuffed with tablecloths and with rings, but my mind is dreaming of Poland, stuffed with Poland, brought in the imagination to a black wedding, a naked bridegroom hovering above his naked bride. Mad Poland, how terrible thy Jews at weddings, thy synagogues with camphor smells and almonds, thy thermos bottles, thy electric fogs, thy braided armpits, thy underwear alive with roots, O oh Poland. Poland, 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 Poland. How thy bells are wrapped in their flowers toll. How they do offer up their tongues to kiss the moon, old moon, old mother, stuck in thy sky thyself, an old bell with no tongue, a lost utter. O oh, Poland, thy beer is ever made of rotting bread. Thy silks are linens merely. Thy tradesmen dance at weddings where fanatic grooms still dream of bridesmaids still are screaming past their red mustaches, Poland. We have lain awake in thy soft arms forever. Thy feathers have been balm to us. Thy pillows capture us like sickly wounds and guard us. Uh, let us sail through thy fierce weddings, Poland. Let us tread thy markets where thy sausages grow ripe and full. Let us bite thy peppercorns. Let thy oxen's dung be sugar to thy dying Jews. O oh, Poland, O oh, sweet, resourceful, restless Poland, O oh, Poland of the saints, unbuttoned Poland, repeating endlessly the triple names of Mary. Poland, 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 have we not tired of thee, Poland? No, for thy cheeses shall never tire us, nor the honey of thy goats. Thy grooms shall work ferociously upon their looming brides shall bring forth executioners, shall stand like kings inside thy doorways, shall throw their arms around thy lintels, Poland, and begin to crow. And then somebody translated that for me into Yiddish. Well, Poland 1931, the wedding became Poland 1931, the my Niach is ungestockt mit Tischdacher und mit Fingerlach, aber my Niach holmt von Polen, ungestockt mit Polen, in dem ihn gebracht zwar schwarzer Chassene, a nachter Chassen schwebt über sein nachter Kalle, mit tierhaftige Polen, wie schrecklich deine Jeden auf Chassen ist. Deine Schulen mit Kampfern, Reiches und Mandeln, deine Thermosen, deine elektrische Tumanen, dein Unterwäsch, lebedig mit Wurzeln, Eupäulen, 
poilum, 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 poilum. <clears throat> Once did a performance of that uh, while we were in Milwaukee uh, at a, um, oh, let's say a retirement home or a nursing. It was, it was for an older uh, uh, Jewish audience. So I, you know, I did the uh, poem in English, and then I, you know, I did the poem in the Yiddish translation. You know, and one of the women in the discussion that followed, she said, you know, that was a very nice poem. She said, but I tell you, the Yiddish original is much better than the English translation. <laughs> <laughs> so for a number of years, uh, you know, I, I, I've got a concentration on, uh, you know, on the oral and the and the performative, um, which makes people think that I'm, you know, pushing, you know, the written word aside, you know. But I want, I want all of it. I want all of it. There was. Uh, a, very consciously a, a, a sense uh, that within the United States there had also been, uh, uh, you know, a, 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 a genocide. Uh, at the end of, uh, of Poland, 1931, uh, the figure that I, uh, that I invoke there uh, is um, uh, a California Indian uh, named Ishii. who was the last survivor uh, of his uh, group, a small tribe or band or you know, nation of, uh, uh, of Indians who had been uh, deliberately exterminated uh, you know, by uh, uh, white settlers. And there's a photograph of him when he first comes out of the wilderness, basically naked, and they throw a, a trench coat you know, around him. He's a very thin, gaunt figure with his coat thrown around him. It's a, you know, like those people coming out of the death camps. Uh, he never gave his real, you know, his name. Uh, he just gave the uh, Yana Indian word for a person, for a man, Ishi. You know, that's what Uji in Hebrew, Ish, you know, also is, uh, is a man. The mystery of evil rests in God no less in terror. Fathers who shun the world cry scandal where they spawn, eyes dark as dungeons, a wool beard on every face. Men grow transparent in their rages, oblivious the more they claw with longing at each other's flesh. The mystery of terror rests in God, no less in evil. Poems are written to the dead, the ones who do not speak nor share a common language. In the air of caves, a figure like a god lies broken. His glasses tumble to the ground. His breath smells sweet to everybody. Fools find places where they track the stalkers. Legs that cross a line, a line that dwindles to a point, a point that shatters. Stars collide. The world, words of poems go up in smoke. Mothers brandish babes like weapons. There is no boundary dividing life from art. Yo na yo yo hey yo hey yo hey gaya na wa ya hey.